Hello world, welcome. This is the news bulletin on Kashimawa TV. I'm your host Christy. Thanks for joining us. On this terrific Tuesday, we have on the news bulletin, Rwanda's President Kagame sworn in to extend lengthy tenure. Rwanda's President Paul Kagame was sworn into office on Sunday for a five-year term, after a landslide win in last month's election extended his near-quarter century in office. The 66-year-old former rebel leader won the July poll with 99.18% of the vote, after eight other candidates including his most vocal critics were barred by the Electoral Commission. Kagame won acclaim from Western and regional leaders for helping end the 1994 genocide and turning Rwanda into an attractive investment and aid destination. But his reputation has been sullied by allegations of rights abuses and suppression of dissent plus supporting rebels in Democratic Republic of Congo all accusations he has denied. For the last 30 years, our country has been good work in progress. This new mandate means the beginning of even more hard work, Kagami said. That expectation to keep improving is not a dream, it is a reality. We can do it and we will do it. The swearing-in took place at Kigali's Amahoro National Stadium, with thousands in attendance, many wearing t-shirts in the yellow, green and blue colors of the national flag. Kagami received a military 21-gun salute, accompanied by cheers from the crowd. 22 heads of state from African countries were in attendance. In other news, death toll from Uganda landslide rises to 21. The death toll from a landslide at a vast garbage dump in Uganda's capital Kampala has risen to 21, police said as rescue workers continued to dig for survivors. After torrential rain in recent weeks, a huge mound of garbage at the city's only landfill site collapsed late on Friday, crushing and burying homes on the edge of the site as residents slept. President Yoweri Museveni said in a statement he had directed the Prime Minister to coordinate the removal of all those living near the garbage dump. The government has also started investigations into the landslide's cause and will take action against any officials found to have been negligent, the Inspectorate of Government said on X. At least 14 people have been rescued so far, police spokesperson Patrick Onyango said, adding that more could still be trapped but the number was unknown. Tents have been set up nearby for those displaced by the landslide, the Red Cross said. The landfill site, known as Kitizi, has served as Kampala's sole garbage dump for decades and had turned into a big hill. Residents have long complained of hazardous waste polluting the environment and posing a danger to residents. Efforts by the city authority to procure a new landfill site have dragged on for years. There have been similar tragedies elsewhere in Africa from poorly managed mountains of municipal garbage. In 2017 at least 115 people were killed in Ethiopia crushed by a garbage landslide in Addis Ababa. In Mozambique, at least 17 people died in a similar 2018 disaster in Maputo. I'm Christy. The News Bulletin will be back shortly. Subscribe to Kashimawo TV. See more, hear more. Welcome back. This is the News Bulletin and I'm Christy. Moving on. Tanzanian police release opposition leaders after mass arrests. Several leaders of Tanzania's main opposition party Kadima and hundreds of their supporters were released after mass arrests over a banned youth meeting in the southwest of the country, police and a party spokesperson said. Human rights organizations have criticized the arrests, with Amnesty International saying they were part of efforts to intimidate the opposition in the run-up to local government elections later this year and a national election in 2025. President Samia Suluhu Hassan has taken some steps to ease restrictions on the media and opposition since coming to power in 2021, but rights groups say arbitrary detentions have continued. Police banned the meeting in the city of Embia that Kadima's youth wing planned to hold on Monday on the grounds that it was likely to breach the peace. In total more than 500 Kadima supporters were arrested over Sunday and Monday, as well as party chairman Freeman Embo and vice chairman Tundu Lisu. We won't provide a chance to a few criminals to destroy peace by copying what is happening in neighboring countries, police commissioner Awad Haji said late on Monday, 
a likely reference to weeks of youth-led protests in Kenya this year which inspired demonstrations in Nigeria and Uganda. Kadima spokesperson John Rima confirmed the party's top leadership had been released, but said there were reports some youth-wing supporters in Ambia were yet to be freed. In June, demonstrators angered by the Kenyan government's plan to hide taxes mobilized online and took to the streets across the country, briefly storming parliament and putting regional governments on edge over potential copycat rallies. Kenya's president William Ruto scrapped the proposed legislation and overhauled his cabinet, but the protests have continued, albeit with smaller crowds. Sarah Jackson, Amnesty International's deputy regional director for East and Southern Africa, in a statement on Monday called on Tanzanian authorities to end arbitrary arrests and detention of political opposition members and reverse the escalating crackdown on civic space. Lastly on the news bulletin, Zambia to reopen closed border with Democratic Republic of Congo. Zambia will reopen its border with Democratic Republic of Congo after sealing it at the weekend due to protests blocking a key export route for the world's second-largest copper producer, the two countries said in a joint statement on Monday. The border, which was closed following an announcement by Zambian Trade Minister Chipoka Malenga on Saturday, will reopen on Tuesday, according to a separate statement from Congo's Trade Ministry. Malenga made the announcement after a Congolese ban on imported soft drinks and beer led to demonstrations by Congolese transporters in the border town of Kasambalisa. Congo on Sunday said talks had begun between the neighboring countries to enable a rapid reopening of the border. On Monday, it said it would authorize the import of goods covered under the ban whose importation had been initiated before the ban came into effect. Congo was the world's number two producer and number three exporter of copper in 2023, producing about 2.84 million tons. Zambia is a key export route for the Central African country. Most of Congo's copper exports pass through the town of Kasambalisa and into Zambia. Now that's all we have for you viewers on the news bulletin. Get social with us, Subscribe to this channel Kashimawo TV. Thanks for sticking around. I'm Christy.